Tom Jones, welcome to Blues Fest. Nice Thank to see you. you in Australia. Thank you. And nice to see you doing a blues festival. And really, it's not such a, a strange place for you, a blues festival, is it? Is, is that something that's very important to your music? Uh, yeah, nowadays especially, because yeah. the last three albums that I've, that I've done with Ethan Johns, there's a lot of blues, gospel, country, rock and roll tunes on there, you know. So, um, and, and they've done a lot of blues fests in uh, Europe. You know, we've we've done quite a few. Uh, yeah. But that's blues. a kind of return to your roots, isn't it? I mean, that's how you started off listening to that gospel exactly. and blues music. Yeah, when I when I was brought up in Wales, I mean, that's what I was. I mean, I sang in chapel. Mm -hmm. You know, we sang hymns. Mm -hmm. We did the old rugged cross. You know, which which yeah. was always my favourite. But then listening to the to the radio, Mahalia Jackson especially, and uh, because in Wales, you know, we a lot of singers in Wales. It's called the land of song, yeah. but it's. Um, slightly different to, to, to the way that uh, the American gospel is and that's what I was that's what I was picking up on so when I was started to sing in, in the pubs and clubs with a, with a rhythm section I was doing quite a few uh, mm -hmm. gospel and, and blues tunes in the show now I've just read your autobiography over the top and back which is a fantastic read mm. and you talk a lot about those early days doing the working men's clubs a very hard gig to do when you're just a teenager as well uh, well, a it, it was a, for you. It was a great training ground. Yeah. Because if you can sing to Welsh people, you know, because they all, a lot of them sing. Yeah. So you go into a workman's club, you know, coal mining clubs they were, mm -hmm. and uh, you can, you can get attention. You know, people listen to you, so you know that you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Because if if you don't, yeah. they'll they'll, you know, get the hook as we say, but they'll pull you off. I mean, they they, they wouldn't. I know some people that uh, that didn't do that well when they came to South Wales, but I was brought up there, and and uh, so I, I had no no trouble. But it was great training ground. I always said this when I went into the Copacabana in New York in '68. You know, and they said you're going to be singing. There's a lot of mafia, you know, in, in this club. I said, look, I've sung in South Wales to coal miners and their wives and their girlfriends. After that, you know, this is going to be yeah. easy. But do you think that made a difference to your when you made a transition to to pop music in the 60s and you started having a lot of hits, yeah. that grounding it in, in you know, traditional music made a big difference? Well, yeah, because, um, the, yes, the training in, in those in those workmen's clubs, you know, that, that was that was big, you know, that was, uh, that was a very important time, I think. For anybody that's starting out, I think you, could try, you should try and do as many shows as possible. Uh, and then when you get a hit record, if, if you're lucky enough to do, mm then you're ready for it, you know, because you've done a lot of, a lot of shows. But even though I was doing, um, it's not unusual, and once you're a pussycat, you know, a lot of the early stuff, I was opening my show to midnight hour, you know, Wilson Pickett. So there was a lot of uh, blues and rhythm and blues in my shows, uh, even though some of the, uh, the recordings that, that, I, that I was doing, the singles especially, were not. But on my first album, you know, there, there's, there's, some, there's some blues on there. Now you've been through a few different phases of your career as well, in, in stretching over 50 years. Yeah. And some ups and some downs. Mm -hmm. Were there were any points in your career where you thought, well, maybe this is it now? Maybe I've had my no, no, my no, shot. no. I never, I never thought that. I knew when I would be going through. Um, it was just the venues that I was, I was playing. Sometimes I was getting booked into casinos a lot, you know, and um, and that was because of the the, the lack of hit records. Mm -hmm. But there was all there were always people there. And that's the thing that kept me going, because I thought I, I need another hit record, you know. I mean, uh, and if I can get that, then then I can, you know, play places that I really want to play. And and that came about when I did Kiss. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, that was another big renaissance for you, wasn't it? Yeah, that yeah. Period? And then I and then I was back into top forty radio again. So that um, that got me back into in, onto the radio again. You know, and, and then as time went on, then recording with Ethan Johns, of course, um, has got me to where I am now. And those records, those recent records you have made, have delved into a lot of American roots music and, mm. and, um, and gospel and, and, and blues. Yeah. Uh, is some of that going to be part of the, the show that you're doing tonight? Yeah, yeah, well, the, the show I'll be doing tonight will be a mixture of um, uh, the, three, the three albums that I did with, with Ethan. Uh, plus some of the, the older stuff that I've recorded, you know, over the years, mm -hmm. because I think to, to sort of just um, 
push the, the original stuff that I record, you know, got hits with, you know, and not do them. I, I don't think that's fair to an audience, you know. But it's the way you present them, mm -hmm. you know. And and with the same band playing all the songs, they don't stick out like a sore thumb. You know, there's they they all work because yeah. I think people deserve to, to hear those songs as well. And how's your voice holding up? My voice is fine, thank you. Do you have to do anything to look after it? No, just drink plenty of water. Make sure you get enough sleep. Don't drink too much alcohol. Now you're about to walk out there in front of you know 15,000 people or so as a headliner at a festival. You know, 50 years after you started, it must be gratifying to meet still at the top after all that yeah. time. Yeah, especially doing different kinds of venues. Mm -hmm. This is what I like. Mm -hmm. I like to go out um, to people that maybe not necessarily uh, have come here to see me alone. They've come to see a lot of other people as well. So it's, it's, it's a good proving point to get, to be able to go out there and, and sing, you know, to, to people that, uh, that, that I hear to see, see a lot of other people as well. So, so it's all these different venues that I'm playing, um, because I wouldn't like to be doing the same thing all the time. And I, I don't want to do, um, I wouldn't want to be repeating, you know, I wouldn't want to do like just the greatest hits tour, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and that would be it. I, mm -hmm. I like to mix things up to what I'm, with what I'm doing now, you know, and um, and that's what we do. And any regrets about your career over those 50 years? Regrets, no. All in all, it's um, it's been fine. You know, I've I've never I've never recorded a song and thought, oh my God, I, you know, yeah. I wish I hadn't done that. They've they've, they've all been strong records, and uh, so I've been lucky in, in that respect. And what's next for Tom Jones? Uh, what's next for me is more of the same. I want to be able to sing as long as I possibly can and record, you know, with, with new people or uh, people that I haven't recorded with before. You know, it's, it's, it's always challenging mm -hmm. to know because you never know what's going to come up. You never know. Somebody will come forward and say, I've got this song, you know, it would be great if you did a duet with so-and-so, so-and-so. So you never know. These, these things happen. Well, I wish you luck with whatever it is and I um, look forward to seeing you tonight and thanks for being here. Thank you.